Hello, Internet, and welcome to Sony Centric, the Outer Haven's official PlayStation podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kwasnicki. I'm joined on my virtual left by the loyal Mark Sullivan. And to my virtual right, the lovely Delilah Lugo. Hello, everybody. Aren't you proud of me? I did it. I did it on time this time. <laughs> and enthusiastically. I know. I was. I was waiting in great anticipation. My palms were sweaty. Knees weak. Mom's yeah. spaghetti. Ooh. Vomit <laughs> on the sweater already. Oh, throwback. I'm, yeah, I'm spitting right. some mad rhymes right now. Oh. This is the Outer Haven's official PlayStation podcast. We talk about everything Sony. Pretty centrically. Hence Sony centric. <laughs> that was is. really bad. That was <laughs> that really was, bad. That was awful. That was dank. Uh, that's not never early. Mind. <laughs> so, it's the beginning of the episode. It's time for that question, folks. What have you been playing? Oh, that question. Going first. Am I going first? You. You should go first. You never go first. Let's do it. Me? Yeah, you. Fine. I mean, uh, I've just been playing post-game Final Fantasy 15. I'll rub it in. That game is yeah, exactly. I'll rub it in <laughs> that. I'll rub it in that I got the fucking royal garments. That's not I gonna got... spoil anything, is it? No. Dude. I mean, basically, uh, basically, once you beat the game, you get uh, Noctis gets to wear King Regis's like outfit because that's what he wears when he becomes king. That's like the king's uniform. Oh, you just spoiled that he becomes that. Ah! Is it a spoiler I... that the fucking prince becomes king? Basically, he just wears his dad's clothes. That's it. We wash them first. <laughs> I hope he washed them. Put them in the I don't washer. know if you... Anywho, what have you guys been playing? Yo, I've been playing early game Final Fantasy XV because school's out for the winter, not the summer. So move aside, Alice Cooper. Um, But yeah, I've been playing Final Fantasy XV. And don't worry, I didn't actually spoil anything for you. Hope not. Bye. Delilah, Delilah, what about you? Well, th- literally a few hours ago was my last final, so I've only gotten to play Overwatch as usual, and I I was almost master rank, and for some reason the night I decided to play, um, it was doing this weird thing where it was kicking you out of matches and it wouldn't let you rejoin. So, Damn. Yep. Sad story. Sad story. Sounds like much fun. And no, folks, we're not going to be talking about the sexual escapades of our favorite Overwatch heroes. No, but good comic. Go read it. Yeah, I don't care whose dick that uh, Winston be sucking. <laughs> Jason, he likes bananas, okay? Why do you think he likes bananas so much, Mark? Oh, oh man. He also likes peanut... Oh, God, he likes peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Moving on to our first topic... We got some news. There haven't been a huge amount of news stories going on, but those that did, man, it's bombs. Dropping bombs. Former Konami president. You know, I'm going to let Mark take this one because he knows more about it than me. Mark, spin that shit. Spin that shit. All right. So, Shinji Hirano, the former president of Konami Europe, he is now apparently president of Kojima Productions. Not the old Kojima Productions. But the current Kojima Productions, because there used to be a Kojima Productions at Konami, and now there's the Kojima Productions that's independent. And apparently, he's the president, as oh, oh as according to his uh, his LinkedIn profile. So, Ta-da! that was that supposed to be like the alert sound? Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> oh whether God. or not I should actually vocalize it, or I should just edit it in afterwards. Oh. But I already did it. I went there. Yeah, man, you tried. I got it. I got it. I understood what it was. But, yeah, apparently he started working there uh, last month in November, and uh, that's really interesting. Uh, For those of you that don't know, there was the whole Konami split between Kojima, and we documented that. We talked about that on the show, didn't we? Yeah, we've talked about it numerous times. Yeah, yeah, this is just, uh, oh, this is too good to be true. Like, the fucking Cloak and Dagger shit going over at konami 
George R. R. Martin's gonna write a book about it one day. George R. R. Martin. <laughs> that's why he. That's why he's failing to like keep up with the will, television show. Will we show. actually get? Will we actually he's get the book before writing... he passes away? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he currently can't finish Game of Thrones because he's writing a you know a large fantasy epic about Kojima's fucking adventures at Konami. Well, you know what? This really, this really, I feel just kind of paints a picture that it was like more than just Kojima and and his studio were getting were kind of getting uh the not shaft, so much yeah. not so much yeah i guess bullied but not really bullied but like let, let's look let's look at it konami really shifted their their focus from triple like from triple a games and they they realized that pachinko machines and and, and more uh, and mobile games are, are a much more lucrative business model for them so uh, shinji hirano was much more on that triple a side uh, I, I he must have been getting thrown around as much as Kojima was, and now he, like so many others before him, have now partnered back up with Kojima. Yeah, I think one of the um, one of the things about this whole saga, and at this point, it I think it it's pretty clear that it's larger than just Kojima. It's it's about how Konami. Um, treated their employees in general on right. in, within their gaming division. I think it really just goes to emphasize the fact that, you know, we as fans look at gaming as an art, as a hobby, you know, as fun. Uh, and, and, you know, for many of us, it is a lifestyle. It's a life choice. But for, you know, these companies, it's first and foremost a business venture. Right. I don't know, Delilah, you're I'm not going to say unusually quiet because you're almost always quiet. What do you think? <laughs> I think as soon as he saw that Metal Gear Survive trailer, he was like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. this. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, though. I mean, they said they demoted him a few times and um, he became, he got demoted from president all the way to corporate officer. So I'd, I'd bounce too, just based on that. But um, also, like, Hideo Kojima is a legend. Like I would follow him wherever he went too. So that was a smart, smart, smart move. Yeah. What if there's just a, a mass exodus of Konami employees from Japan? Kojima just goes over there. He parts the, the uh, what is it, the Japan Sea or whatever, the China the, Sea, the South Japan China Sea. sea. <laughs> he, oh my god. He parts god. it, and they all walk across the to Japan mainland was. China. <laughs> Some biblical shit right there as Kojima leads the rest of his uh, fellow Konami refugees out. Anyway, let's move on. I've already fucked up this podcast enough at this point. So, and before you say it, no, Mark and I did not plan this, but there's Final Fantasy news. Ah! Uh, actually, we did kind of plan it a little bit. A little bit, just a tiny bit. There was some planning. So there have been rumors going around, I'm sure... If you're into Final Fantasy, you've seen maybe on NeoGAF. Um, Probably flipped your lid. Yeah. Um, Probably opened up one of the magic flasks. And no, man. Lit everything on fire with excitement. No, it's uh, you, it's your... Unicast. Whatever, man. Try Unicast. Whatever, you gotta, man. You gotta put all of, all of your magic points in from all three. So you get Try Unicast, Max Potency... And then you throw in a magic tech enhancer, you get a curse cast. Or anyway, one of them use one of them catalysts. Anyway, <laughs> it's Final Fantasy's 30th anniversary this year. Oh my! And well, there have year. been rumors circulating that Square had something pretty big up their sleeve, oh my namely, God. Uh, in addition to the remaster of Final Fantasy 12, the Zodi that's being called the Zodiac Age that we already know about. Um, it doesn't yet have a release date, but it's supposed to be coming uh, this upcoming year. Spring, I think they yeah, uh, spring, initially it, said. Yeah. Which means like June or July. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, this these rumors that have been circulating have said that Square is supposed to be releasing a collection of all of the mainline single player Final Fantasies up through 13, including, and for, you know, 8. 7, 8, and 9, like the remastered editions that recently came out um, with, like, well, you know, all the cheap buttons and shit. This is where it gets, like, crazy, okay? Because, yeah, th this was supposed to be a compilation. So, th all right, let's keep in mind, yes, this is a rumor. We don't know. We have no confirmation of this. 
but the compilation is going to have uh, reportedly 1 through 9 uh, for PS4 and PS Vita on a single disc slash card. Now, first of all, that would be fucking crazy on Vita. Yes, yeah, that would be cr- Just to be able to walk around and with that one thing in, like, have you have it nine all. nine games. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You'll never see me again. <laughs> um, I, think a lo- I think a lot of people would buy Vita. Uh, trophy support? Oh my god. Um, but the uh the the idea apparently this is gonna have, have ver- uh, multiple versions of uh one th- of Final Fantasies one through six um so that that'll be it'll it'll be able you'll probably be able to switch between the original versions and the modern ports uh and th- that it also includes that two and three will apparently be localized that's where it loses me a bit I don't know if that's I believe so cool that. for for yeah from a from a fan standpoint, that's so fucking cool. But I don't know that they'd really put in that work for for games that old. That's the thing. Well, I think I think Square you, Square has regained a lot of um, goodwill with me in the past few years. They have. Um, I would. Yeah, agree. I think I think they know they gotta step it up. But they also they also uh, they they have fucked up ports in the past, especially in my opinion. The mo- those you're talking ports, about the mobile ports. Though. Those mobile ports look terrible. And um, I will I will agree that um the, I believe it was the PC port of six. Well, bo- both where they five used and the six. mobile they used yeah. the mobile version, yeah. But I mean the port of four, the one they made um, on what was it, 3DS and PC. The, uh, but they made 3D, it in 3D. The DS, the the DS remake. Yeah, or was it DS, not 3DS? I'm sorry. Yeah, but that was awesome. The the uh, 3D one. That was, and if they had, and if they had redone, if they had redone five and six in that vein, because that vein was a uh, was was basically they they remade three, uh, to be to be localized for the first time uh, overseas and 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 completely 3D, and that's what they did with four. They made four the same the same vein. Yes. If they had continued and done that with five and six, I would feel a lot better. Right. But, but I think they, I think they six... kept the same game and just made the art look very yeah they out fucked of place. up the pixel art yeah um all right it, it, before be nice before to we continue those, but... before we continue because right now we're just talking about speculation the right. actual news um, is that Square has announced that the opening ceremony for the 30th anniversary festivities will be on January 31st yeah um they're not talking much yet. Uh, this is going to be in the Toho Cinemas. Yeah, uh, in Rapongi Hills. I've been there. I've been to Rapongi Hills. Yeah, because you know Mark uh, was in Japan. Yeah, Big man. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so mad. So they've they've yet to actually announce um, any kind of lineup or you know more detailed plans into what their no, software yeah. releases are going to look have, like. We have absolutely no clue what what this is going to entail. But um, um, the series executive producer, Shinji Hashimoto, said the company will announce them soon in an interview with Famitsu. I so think, that's, that's what we know for sure right now. I think a safe bet, um, and uh, by the way, th- that, that whole collection thing gets even more out of whack when you get into the collector's editions for it. Um, yeah. Which I, I don't even want to read off because there's so much in them in the rumor, and I also don't believe them at all. And then there's the entire question of, you know, we've heard about... The remake of seven being episodic could we see an episode Bolty one come out this part. year huh. so could actually, we, could we see just like a midgar episode come out this year so is actually it too soon i, I think I it's do, too soon but i i personally think that they are going to drop that and i think they're going to drop it by the end of the year the first the first part of this multi-part multi-part not episodic multi-part uh right. episode uh, final fantasy seven uh I think keep, that will keep in mind those year. games were divided by discs anyway. Right. And, right. and even though th- even though um, they were divided by discs, that was really just a memory thing. Like you could still divide those games pretty clearly by. Hey. Obviously, Midgar's the Midgar section of the game is very different from the rest of the game. Like a lot of people, when they think about Final Fantasy VII nostal- nostalgically, they think about the Midgar sections, but. Like the open, the rest of the like the open world sections of the game and like some of the villages you go to, completely different. Well, let's be fair. The the Midgar section is probably the section most people played solely because 
people don't even yes. might not get through it before they quit the game. Right, uh, exactly. That's just that's typically how it is. But Midgar Midgar is a really memorable tutorial stage. Right, and so it, when that's essentially oh, what that is. No, that, that's just essentially what Midgar is. It's a, it's the tutorial to the game, and when, once you get let out into that open world, that's when the game really opens up. That's when it begins uh, to to show you what it's got. Right, and it's just funny as a side note because when you actually get into that open world tonally final fantasy 7 is like every final fantasy all over the place like there are like like village villages there's high tech places there are places like you know um crap what is the i'm forgetting the name of the casino gold saucer yeah gold saucer there are places like that that are more modern looking there are places that are more ancient looking you know, so when people, it's funny how people today are criticizing, you know, Final Fantasy 15 for its I, mixed styles when it's yeah. like seven was the same fucking way. Eight I mean, was let's the same be real, way. all of yeah, all of them are Eight, that way. Six was that way. Like that's part of Final Fantasy. It's part of its DNA. I mean, let's just be real. It's part of a world. It's part of a world. If you want to build a world, not everything is the same. Yeah. There's no single biome, and there's no there's no there's no cookie cutter city all cities are different but um yeah that's just a side note um as for the remake itself and will we see part one i think i, I want to so... i want to uh, yeah i want to get go down or start with delilah because it's a final fantasy conversation so mark and i always dominate it but i, I want <laughs> i want delilah to get some face time here delilah we'll start with you what what are the odds and i want an explanation that we'll actually see um a, this collection that is rumored, and B, the remake, like the first part of this remake. A, too good to be true. B, too good to be true. Right. <laughs> like, straight up. I I mean, I just feel like we haven't heard anything about the Final Fantasy remake. It would be an appropriate time, considering it's the 30th anniversary, but I feel like they're definitely going to push that towards, like, Sony-related things. And if they didn't do anything at PSX, I don't know that they're going to do anything too significant here, although I want it to. Like, that would be a real big surprise. It would make that 30th anniversary huge. I mean, like, think about how underplayed and 7 Day was. I feel like oh, maybe God. there's things that they, they could be showing at this 30th anniversary that they might not that that they'll show somewhere else and we'll be like well maybe they should have done it at the 30th anniversary event whatever the case this collection i mean when i saw that i was like no fucking way i mean i'm thinking about like six-year-old delilah or five-year-old delilah playing uh the nes version of final fantasy one and and um to, to go back to that and just like hear the music and just feel what that's like that that's crazy um but I mean, Metal Gear did it. Metal Gear Legacy Collection, so it's it's doable. But I I just feel like it's too good to be true. All right, Mark. On the contrary, I went into PSX basically swearing that Square Enix was going to be there. They weren't, and then they announced this. I think that that's be they didn't show anything at PSX because they were saving it for this 30th anniversary, and I think they are going to show and date the first part of this Final Fantasy VII remake. I, I, I really do. It was announced, what, E3, uh, was that, was that 2015? Yeah. We've, and we, last thing we saw of it was last PSX, PSX 2015. Like, we haven't seen yeah. it in over a year now. Um, I think they're gonna, if they want to make it multi-part, they have to crank it out. And that, that team, they've been, they've been outsourcing to uh, other developers for it, they've been taking in feedback from other Square Enix developers. Uh, I think they've been hard at work, and I I, I, I do think that something's going to happen with that. Um, what about the collection? The collection? I hope so, and I don't. Like I said, I start to I start to lose it with some of the more detailed parts of it, like the like the like two and three from NES getting getting official translations. I, it really loses me there. It really loses me with these absolutely ridiculous collector's editions. Um, but like this collection, I don't. We don't really know this because it didn't come out in North America. But for the twentieth anniversary, uh, Final Fantasy, they did put out a big box set in Japan, 
right. that had uh i think every final fantasy up to 2007 so it would have had one through 12 i'm yeah. fairly certain it had that this is this is uh and and, and it, let's keep in mind that was a uh, one one through 12 on their initial on their original platform so or uh, on on PlayStation platform, so even three was a UMD for PSP. Yeah, at that at that point, because at that point uh, it was still PS2, right? Like, right, we were still and well, PS2 we were was PS3 PS1. generation, but there was no Final Fantasy game on PS3 at the time. Right, and right. PS and at that point in time, I believe both the PS3 and PS2 were backwards. Well, I mean, the the PS2 was definitely backwards compatible, but right, because I mean, the PS3 the, at the, the first time game, was. yeah, the first game I bought for the PS2 was Final Fantasy IX. Um, Right, but PS3 originally was as well. Yeah, so at that time, yeah, it, it was uh the the only game you wouldn't have been able to play on a PS3 at that time was was Final Fantasy III because it came with a UMD. But all the one, two, and uh, four, five, and six were all on PS1 or uh, and seven, eight, and nine were all on PS1 discs. Uh, Ten and twelve, I don't remember if eleven was in there. Were on PS2 discs. Like it had all of those boxed in a really nice box. Uh, and it went for an absurd. It still goes for an absurd price uh, on eBay, but it that they did do that for the 20th anniversary. A collection I would not be surprised if they did for the 30th anniversary. A collection that has a season pass, which is rumored. Uh, no, I I that that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And all the physical items. If you get a chance, look at this leak. I don't want to read everything because it's a lot, yeah, it's but a lot. it is absolutely absurd the things that this leak says are going to be included in this crazy ass collector's edition yeah i'm with you where um i think there's a lot of hyperbole in the leak i would not be surprised though if we see <clears throat> um a at least uh four six seven through nine twelve thirteen like will we see ports of two and three the original two and three maybe um, if they were, I would expect them to be pretty half-assed. Basically, I just, yeah, I, I, basically, I, I, I just feel like we're going to get the games that we've already seen before here in the States. Um, the ones that have been remastered will be remastered or redone. Or they'll have, um, they'll have the option for it, you know. But, you know, that that's believable. Like, I, I actually really do think that we'll see some sort of package like that because they've kind of been building up to it the way they've been incrementally releasing all these different remasters and re-releases on steam on uh you know ps4 right. and so on and so forth as for the first installment of the seven remake i'm it's iffy because like you said, they've been outsourcing it to, uh, shit. What is the, I, I forget yeah, what the is, name. Yeah. I forget yeah, the name. It's, of the it's like literally a no name company that does like optimization. Well, there's also, um, there's also one studio in there that is well known. I just can't remember which studio it is. Yeah. It's, it, it, it yeah. It, it, there's one studio. They named it. They like talked about it pretty openly at E3. Like, Oh no, square isn't doing this right now. We literally have everybody working on 15 to get this shit out. Right, um, and I also I like I I do think this is coming. Uh, I don't know that they're gonna pry with this being Final Fantasy uh, Final Fantasy's thirtieth anniversary. I don't know that they're gonna prioritize Kingdom Hearts three at that for that for all no, next year. No, definitely not. Which yeah. is kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a shame. Fucking forget about Kingdom Hearts three, dude. Like I believe the question of whether or not we see that remake. Uh, this in, in this year by the end of this year um it's entirely dependent upon how much work was that outsourced company able to get done between you know because we know like, virtually no work had been done on the game back when it was first shown or when it was first teased at in 2015 at that legendary e3 conference um that was like a whole big thing was that like oh i What's his name? Nomura didn't even know the game was being made. Like, remember that? Like, people right. who were supposedly working on it didn't know the game was being made. So we know at that point there was no work had been done on that game. I'm like fumbling for words, sorry. So the, <laughs> quest the question becomes, how much work did this company that doesn't really have a hard track record 
um, at least in the AAA space. How much work were they able to get done between that E3 conference and now, now that Final Fantasy XV is out there in the wild? Because at this point, we know that Square can start shifting resources over to help them if it is indeed their plan to get seven out or at least the first part by the end of this year you know it's gonna largely depend on how much work has already been done so i'm like 50 50 on that game coming out being part of this I don't know. Yeah. I, I think if they're gonna if they're gonna pull this if they're gonna pull this multi part thing, that they have they they do have to do it in in a reasonable in reasonable time intervals. And I think waiting any longer than after twenty seventeen is that when they when you announce it in twenty fifteen, kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. Defeats the purpose of I mean that that pro that pro don't get me wrong I wrote an article on this a while back that project is going to be is wildly ambitious it's going to be huge but they do need to really double down and, and get them out there if they're going to try and pull this off. Right. So, exciting time for JRPG fans. I mean, not just Final Fantasy. We got Persona 5 coming out soon. Uh, Trails of Cold Steel 3, I believe that's the one, which just announced as a PS4 exclusive. What? Got a lot of oh, JRPG. Yeah. I, I w <laughs> like I was saying, you know, before this recording to Mark, um, if only I had the money to buy a, a fucking Vita, I'd be playing all those Trails games. And so many good JRPGs that are only on the Vita, and so many older JRPGs that you can only really play now on the Vita if you don't have your old PS1. So, yeah, good time for JRPG fans, exciting time for Final Fantasy fans. Lots of good news. But, we must move on to our yeah. final topic. Speaking this of multi-part a... games episodic games yes yeah, speaking of episodic games <laughs> telltale games today comes out the, on the uh, day of this recording yeah on the day of this recording uh telltale's walking dead uh net was it next frontier a new the frontier new frontier sorry the next frontier boldly gone out, when no man has gone before break out your theremin but um yeah the new telltale series for uh well not series the new I guess chapter in the Walking Dead series comes out today, which for me begged a question because the last Telltale game I played, I believe it was episode two or three of, yeah, it was, it was like episode two or three of the Game of Thrones series. Yeah. Um, which I had to play simply because I'm such a huge Game of Thrones fan. I love the books, love the, the television series. Um, I'm really into that whole world that, jo that George R. R. Martin set up. That George R. R. Martin. George R. R. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, now, now I'm just thinking of South Park George R. R. Martin. And I, I just can't get it out of my head. Boy. Um, so anyway. That's what the show needs. It's yeah, more it's... South Park. <laughs> <laughs> more wieners. But, um... So... God damn it, Mark. <laughs> Telltale. So I was thinking about Telltale because the last memory I have of Telltale games is kind of rage quitting. N not rage quitting, just like quitting indifferently that series. Simply because I guess my main point of frustration with those games is they don't really feel like games to me. I feel like... And, you know, let's... Not even getting to like all the technical issues and shit that people always complain about in Telltale's engine, like just the principle of the way in which those games are designed, like yes, they're good at telling stories, but keep in mind like we're playing a game and I feel like none of the choices I make in Telltale games ever really have a meaningful impact on the way the story resolves itself and mm -hmm. i mean they they do have they do have like an impact on maybe a character approaches a certain conversation in a different way or maybe one character like you, i don't know one character might not even be there they might be like like in the batman series like you know penguin can like fuck up uh what's his name 
uh, Harvey Dent or whatever. Like, you know, different shit like that. I, I don't know. I'm trying not to, like, spoil shit for people yeah, yeah, who yeah. like these games and haven't played them. But, like, the way any given conflict in a Telltale plot resolves itself is almost never different based on the choices you make. And that's so, like, contrary to what for me, the idea of a game is, like, look at a game, uh, I'm always gonna point to Infamous 2, I just fucking love the ending of Infamous 2, and that game's way behind us now, so I feel like we can spoil it, but that game ends so uh, fucking drastically differently, depending on the choice Well, choices yeah, you, you, have, you have an entirely different boss fight, you have an entirely different yeah. sequence of events that happens depending on whether or not you're good or, e good or evil. And then at um, the end, you get, like, a choice, you can completely flip the entire script yeah yeah you can oh god infamous 2 is so good um it's so so good. that that's my main gripe i mean leave aside like the technical issues i could overlook it's right. the, like the whole design philosophy and i don't know if it's maybe it's just me that i feel like the whole telltale shtick is a little outdated and, or needs to be adjusted or needs to be revamped i don't know you guys uh let's start with uh delilah because again delilah doesn't talk as much as us and i feel like she <laughs> i feel like she actually might play more telltale games than either of us so yeah I, I haven't touched a telltale game since walking dead season two but i do i i do want to talk about that a little bit so go ahead delilah yeah um you know t first of all the games aren't like detailed enough to have technical issues so that that's a problem that just needs to not happen like you're not doing anything <laughs> outstanding for you to like protect like final fantasy technical issues it makes sense it's like a big game open world that, that makes sense technical issues aside um storytelling like i do think that choices do have an impact although i'm not sh i've never played a telltale game over to see how much of an impact nor am i the type to like go on youtube and just be like okay what happens if i do this just because i don't know i'd rather just move on um but it is fun to hear like how other what other what choices other people made like if we like let's say we all played batman and we all talked about our choices in batman and kind of seeing like how different scenarios played out for us based on our choices that would be pretty cool however um yes it is not a game and when you see games like the witcher 3 that you your your conversations and your your dialogue choices have an impact on the ending overall like a huge impact on the ending like three or four different endings um that's the game that i want to play for story and for gameplay and for the world and the universe and that's my idea of a game however Telltale Games is, for me, a good break after playing a really huge open world game. Like, I just kind of want to sit down, I don't want to think, I want to have a controller in my hand, not even, like, pay, like, you don't even, like, put much thought into it, you're just kind of, like, pressing a button to make a choice and, um, clicking, pointing and clicking around, and it's just so relaxing and simple that I feel like I like the Telltale Games just to kind of wind down from a really hefty game like the witcher 3 for example yeah mark so telltale games are essentially the modern evolution of point and click adventure games uh they and and that's like that's where that genre kind of pushed and now it's like very very narrative driven thanks to them uh they are super hit and miss with the choices. I feel like no matter what choices you make in the first season of The Walking Dead, it kind of comes down to the same outcome. That's what I'm saying. But that being said, Walking Dead season two, and which I don't want to spoil, has I think at least four or five different endings, depending on the choices you make. And that's like the one example I can think of off the top. Because I, I honestly haven't played that many Telltale games. I played The Walking Dead Season 1 and 2, which I loved. Uh, and I I'll, I especially love The Wolf Among Us. I played that uh, but as I mean, the episodes of... were coming out. But that outcome was the same pretty much no matter what. Uh, like, certain things were different, but it was the, it was pretty much the same ending regardless of what you did. Walking Dead Season 2 it really ended with something to talk about. For you to talk, for, for the three of us, or you and whoever the hell else played it, to really discuss, like, what choices did you make, what ending did you get, because there were so many different outcomes, and I, I, 
Now with the new Frontier out, I kind of want to see how those choices affect how that game starts because they're, it's it's just radically different. And that, see, that, that, that's I'm like curious. literally the one example I can think of Telltale having having choices severely alter how it's gonna how the game ends. I'm curious because um, season two of Walking Dead, I actually never I didn't play season two. Okay. So I, I and I have heard this a similar thing before. Yeah. But tell me is like at, at all these different endings of for season two of the walking dead the key characters were they in the same situation like could you lose really crucial to the plot characters uh at, at the in the ending yeah yes okay it's it's the ending to the walk the end of, the ending to season two had multiple factors that would decide which ending you got and there were there were multiple it wasn't like like I'm gonna go ahead and spoil season one just because season one is 2012 if you haven't yeah. played it yet I I do still suggest you go do it because the ending is one thing but it's the journey that really counts uh the ending to season one is is you decide if is Lee turns into a zombie no matter what, but you or he's bitten no matter what. It, it you have to decide whether or not to kill him or leave him be, and that's emotional in its own right. But it's the same thing essentially. You either kill him or you let him become a zombie and he's basically dead. Yeah, either way, um, that's that's my point is that the conflict or not necessarily conflict it's the wrong word in this case it, it it's it's the same the status resolution quo. the, the yeah. ending yeah it, it 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 is it but season two really really flipped that around and, and gave you if it gave you multiple factors that would affect whether you go here with this person or go to another place with this person or it really it, it just really changed that's like the one example where i really feel it was it was different Right, and I mean that's that's cool. I'm all right. So that gives me hope, and I mean maybe at some point I will go back to to Telltale Games. I just haven't, you know, in, in a while. Um, it's just that I think about games, you know, like I was we were just talking about Infamous, like Delilah said, Witcher. The so leading from well, just to walk, jump back to the, uh, Walking Dead, See, jumping from season one to season two doesn't really. Uh, affect much, but the ending of season two really makes me wonder how season how the new a new frontier opens up, uh, which I I will likely be picking up relatively soon because uh, I I do really like really enjoy those games and it's been a long time since I played a Telltale game. Yeah, I didn't play. I remember very uh, vivid or vividly is the wrong word because that means you remember it clearly. Right. Um, I remember it very uh, foggily. No, I think vivid, good... vividly would be correct. Oh, vividly! God damn it! <laughs> I remember it very vividly playing go. the first season. I but like I just said, I never played season two, so I might dive into um, to New Frontier. I kind of I kind of want to check out the, um, the rest of the Batman one though. I I, I, I want to jump into that. The besides the, uh, the the besides the engine, which Telltale really does. I, I I don't know how they fixed it at all. Delilah, is someone that's played them more recently than all, either of us. I think that's a resounding no. Okay. Like, no. yeah, like literally everybody that, that's such who a shame. talks about these games says that, and that's kind of infuriating at this point. Well, what, yeah, when it's I was almost like through, they're just shitting on us. When <laughs> I was playing through The Wolf Among Us, oh my! I mean, my PS3 is it, it's kind of it's kind of old. It's it's this it's the slim, but I got it in 2010. It's showing its age, but playing through The Wolf Among Us was one of the most infuriating and frustrating things because I was really enjoying it, and then suddenly the game would freeze. And I'd right. have to, I'd have to either shut down my system or restart the game to try and, and, and it, it was just so. It, 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 I'm talking it up to the engine because the, uh, as opposed to my hardware because the engine is so buggy all around. But besides the technical issues and the the engine itself needing fix, they really need to fix the writing when it gets to see when it gets to episode four because episode four and all Telltale games have notoriously been bad or not bad but paling in comparison to the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, like, the transition from act, uh, I guess it would be X. From the climax to, yeah, the, yeah. to the resolution, I guess. Right, yeah. It depends on where, where you consider the climax in Telltale Games happening. But, yeah, they... Uh, episode 4 has notoriously been the weakest episode of most Telltale series, and that's just something... I don't know. I, I don't want to say they need to fix it, but it would be nice if they did. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... 
I, I actually purchased uh, Tales of the Borderland for $1.50 uh, during oh the Black God. Friday sale. <laughs> I meant to do that and I forgot. <laughs> it was so worth it. Like, it's really an enjoyable, funny game. Like, put us, putting aside that maybe the ending will probably be the same regardless of your choices. Everything is just, it's hysterical. Like, Troy right. Baker's performance and all the voice actors in there that I don't know their names. It was excellent. I highly recommend it. For a dollar fifty, you can't go wrong. Um, but with The Walking Dead, I forgot what happened. I played the first one, and then the second one I didn't play. And I think I didn't play it because I was mad that it didn't have a platinum. Is that true, or am oh, I? Oh like... yeah, episode <laughs> uh, season two was like weird with the trophies. Uh, they because they did it. They did it like episode one was the main trophy. Uh, was the main trophy list, and then all the uh, subsequent episodes were DLC trophies. Yeah, I Damn. hated that. It I was like that. really weird that they did that. Uh, I, I, I do believe a new frontier is back to the traditional platinum format, though. I don't think uh, Telltale's done another series where it was like that. It's really weird that that was that that was the case. Yeah. So I honestly like because I really loved the first one and like from a storytelling stance like it was the second best told story of that time besides the last of us which says a lot and well that was even, last, yeah that, that was the a last year later of, was it really i mean i probably played yeah, it later. 2012 2013 all right i probably played it later but um you know and even knowing that it was going to be a good story i still the the platinum thing like threw me off which which is pathetic like get get over it delilah move on but maybe <laughs> <laughs> but no, maybe no, uh... it, it, it bothered me too but i still just powered through anyway yeah but um you know but telltale is the easy platinum it's it's not for gamers honestly like hardcore gamers like us that we like like a lot a lot going it's, on it's for people that want a good story it's it the, those are those are for people that want that want a narrative and that's yeah like they're not really bad all they stories want. by any mean i don't mean to imply that just and they, um like that's and i i'm really not kidding lawyer if you really sit down and think about it like this is the modern day evolution of the point and click adventure game it's it's weird because those were always kind of two-dimensional and this is now in the three-dimensional space it's, um but which isn't even necessary exactly those what sequences. these are huh those sequences were like it's 3D and you control them walking around and you like look for random ass yeah, items on the ground. Those sequences are not necessary. Like to, it's no. like yeah, it is kind of to make you uh to make you it's a gamify it a little bit, I guess. And those are probably I would say the weakest parts. I mean, it depends on the part of the game. Like there were some parts of season one, uh, especially when you're on the farm in season one, where I actually really enjoyed the ability to walk around and, and talk to certain people and, and kind of explore uh, on my own. Uh, there's i think there's a part i'm not sure if it's season one or season two you're in like this yard and you have to look around for supplies and it was kind of just like why mm -hmm. yes um, but that's one. like that's like to give you like i guess it's supposed to give you an option to to you know, talk to who you want make uh, find out what information you want to know uh as far as the lore goes or as far as decision decision making goes um but sometimes, yeah, I, I don't know. sometimes those parts are a little unnecessary. There are some that are well done, though. I will, I will absolutely give it that. Mm-hmm. Well done. Like another well done episode of Sony Centric. Oh shit! That was a good pun. That was. Well, I started that was off a good with transition. A I started off with a really shitty one. I ended strong. Folks, this has been Sony Centric, the Outer Heavens official PlayStation podcast. What do you think? Do you think Telltale is uh, getting a little stale, or do you think they're on top of their game? Obviously, they must be doing something right, because they got a shit ton of new properties coming out left and right. Let us know below in the comments. We like to hear from our fans. We also like to know where we should go next. What do you want to see? If you like this video, please hit that like button, and subscribe if you want to see more from The Outer Haven Productions. Also, feel free to go over to www.theouterhaven.net Check out all our written content, our reviews. See what else we do in the World Wide Web. I was going to say the world of the World Wide Web, but that... <laughs> that would be redundant. It would be redundant. Folks, as always, I'm Jason Kwasnicki. You've been joined... Or, I've been joined. I'm sorry. We've all been joined <laughs> by Mark Sullivan and Delilah Lugo at Asasina San. 
Yo, you, never, you never plug my Twitter handle, at Nibbleheimian and later. I don't plug mine either. Oh. Because we have lame ass Twitter handles, dude. At that solid quaz, Jason. Peace I out, like Internet. Em. Later. Peace.